Welcome to the teaching and preaching ministry of Pastor Petrock. God's word is truly quick, alive and powerful. God does everything he does with, via and through his word. Get ready for your life to be shaped and transformed. Your destiny to be modeled, even as you listen to God's word from the lips of his anointed servants. Just one word from God can change your entire life forever. Be blessed as you listen. First John chapter 4. Yeah, I would like you to be here. Just don't go anywhere. First John chapter 4. Are we there? Verse 17. Let's read it together in concert. One, two, three, go. Because. Now let's read that and turn that. Because. Help me look for seven people and tell them I am as he is. I am as he is. Hallelujah. Praise God. Please be seated in God's wonderful presence. Truly, the symbol of our Christianity is not actually a cross. Though it signifies the sacrifice that Jesus um, paid for us. The symbol of our Christianity is not actually a cross. Because the cross was just the first aspect of his sacrifice. And some people say it's an empty tomb. But the symbol of our Christianity is not also an empty tomb. Obviously he resurrected from the, um, from the grave. The symbol of our Christianity is actually a throne. A throne. A throne. And the problem we have in Christianity is for people to understand their posture. Their posture in Christianity. Because there are different postures in the Christian faith. And a certain man wrote a book, um, a powerful evangelist, Watchman Nee, wrote a book, Stand, Walk, and Sit, talking about the different postures of Christian faith. And while some people focus on the standing position of the Christian faith, the standing position of the Christian faith is the position of war. So the Bible says, having done to stand, therefore, stand. The standing position is a position where we fight. It's an important position, but it's not the main position of our Christian faith. Where we fight, we stand to fight. Where we dislodge the kingdom of darkness. The standing position is the position where you are taking territories with, with a sword in your hand, a shield of faith, the breastplate, the shoes of the gospel, the helmet of salvation. You're dressed as a military man taking territories. You fight. And some churches are still in the standing position. How do I know? Every Sunday you go to church, you are fighting something. You are killing the devil. You are fighting the enemy. You are destroying the devil. You are calling Satan to die. So you hear prayer points like, All the enemies in my village. In fact, the way they pray, you will know that these ones are warriors. 
Put your right leg forward. Bram. Joe here is in church. Make sure your head is nodding. Because the nodding of the head is, is a position of knocking the enemy on his head. And everybody is vibrating in the church. In fact, if you don't vibrate in such a church, you are a suspect. Yeah? So you must vibrate. Because if you don't vibrate, they will vibrate you. It's a standing position. It's a good position to stand and defeat the enemy. The Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and mights. So it's, it's a wrestling position. And the second position is the walking position. The walking position is the place where you display your character of Jesus Christ. You walk like Him. And that is the position, the, 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 the standing position is a position of deliverance. While the walking position is a position of holiness. Where you have to show people your conduct. You walk like Jesus. You talk like Jesus. It's a walking position. You have to tell them that this is who Jesus is. You have to be holy. So we have churches that depend on that. The walking position of Jesus Christ. Where you walk, you must show. So the message there is going to be based on character and conduct. Character and conduct. And in the realms of the Spirit... If you go to the book of Psalms, let's look at Psalms, chapter 1. So the walking position is a position of holiness. And you will hear messages that like, uh, without holiness, no one can see God. So they begin to preach messages on conduct. Now, these churches are not wrong. Don't get me wrong. They are not wrong. They are preaching a position that they know. They are preaching a mandate that they have been given. They are preaching a position in Christ that they know. One is to stand and defeat the enemy. So you will have more deliverances in that church and all kinds of manifestation of deliverances in that church. And people that feel like there's a, there's a devil after their life, they will usually run to those churches to exercise the faith that those people have. And in the church, 90% of the time, they are praying. They are praying. It's a prayer church. It's a church that enforces prayer. In that church, when people are sleeping, they are praying. Yeah, I'm telling you, just go to the church, just sit down for some time. You just find that as the pastor is preaching, the message is solemn, and they are dozing, they will be like you. Because the ushers don't disturb people that pray. Let's look at Psalms. Psalms chapter 1. Prophetically, Psalms, understanding the ideologies, began to describe to us these different positions in Christ. He said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor what? Standeth in the way of the sinners. Nor what? Seated in the seat of the scum. He spoke about these three positions prophetically. And the third position is the what? The seating position. The seating position. <laughs> and this is the position that God is interested in. Because when you are a baby Christian, you are so focused on the devil. You are more in tune with his activities and his plans. This is a wicked world. The Bible says, we know we are of God, but the entire world lieth in wickedness. One version says, the entire world lieth under the sway of the wicked one. So when you are a baby Christian, you are more in tune. You are more focused of the activities of Satan and what he can do. And how powerful Satan is. And you preach his activities, you preach his power. You preach the manifestation of satanic influences over cities, over territories, over the lives of men. It becomes a strong message in your soul. You talk about how there are demonic people everywhere. You share stories of things that are happening in the village. 
Then you hear things in the church like, hmm, huh, hmm. Like one man, they, were, they caught him. Guess what? They found under his bed. The head of another human being. He has killed his children. Hey. We, we, and people love to hear such kind of messages. Why? Because something in us believes that an auntie somewhere in our village is following us. Amen. But the walking position emphasizes so much on the conduct of the believer. You have to behave well. You have to walk this thing. You have to show the world that you are a follower of Jesus Christ. So there's so much holiness. And I've come to realize as I grow up as a believer, there is no perfect church. (laughs) There is no perfect church. If the church was perfect, the day you walked in, the church stopped being perfect. If you believe you are you belong to a perfect church, as you are a member of that church, that church is not perfect. How do I know? Your life is not perfect. So we strive to be holy as we walk the walk of Jesus Christ. It's, 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 there's a striving, there's a striving, there's, there's a pursuit, there's a walk. Do not lie, do not steal, do not covet your neighbors, do not look at a woman lustfully, do not commit adultery. When you people are dating, sit apart. You, you go through rules and regulations. You sit apart. You don't know there are churches that if you're dating, you sit apart. The day you want to visit the girl, you must visit her in the pastor's house. <laughs> Tashi Ankali, in this day and age. <laughs> so, the guy and the girl will now go to the pastor's house and open Bible and sit in front of the pastor. Who are you to see me? Now, do you see what they said in Genesis? Ah, ah, me yuko soto ebayada, ebede, ebede. Then their toast will be, will be holy toast, holy toast. I love the way your skirt is so long. It does not reveal your ankles to the world. You are a decent woman. I love the way your hair is covered, like the sky is covered the earth. <laughs> oh God. I don't want to be such a pastor where two people like that come to my house to come and say that they are doing relationship. You come and sit down in my house and be doing the relationship with Bible. They are pretending. Uh, our pastor, can't we have believers that are discussing? Listen, when you are discussing the Bible as a believer, it comes out of you. It's, it's not something you rehearse. It's a spontaneous spiritual thing. You just sit down with somebody and your opinion is the word of God. It, you are filled with the word. You discuss the word. It's not, it's not something that you are trying to say, ah, let's discuss word now. No, 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 no. You are dating. If you know it's a godly relationship, you put God first. Prayer will not come because you guys want to form prayer. Let's, we'll be praying and fasting on Wednesday. Well done. <laughs> For this is our relationship. We'll be praying and fasting on No, no. It will just happen naturally. When you guys see yourself as you're discussing, prayer will just kick up in the atmosphere. Praise God. But they want to form it. And that's where a lot of churches like that, that, that they are not wrong. It is good to preach holiness. It is good. It is good to flog the conduct. Paul said, I beat my body and make it my slave, that after I have preached, I myself might not be disqualified for the prize. So it's good to preach about holiness. It's good to preach about conduct. It's good. But that's not the center of our message. There is another position in a believer. It's called the sitting position. 
That position is a position of rest. Is a position of rest. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 5 even when we were dead in sins had quickened us together with Christ by grace by grace ye are saved and has raised us up together and made us to do what? we are what? we sit together in heavenly places where? in Christ so we have another position called the sitting position the sitting position is a place of rest. It's a place where you do not struggle with the enemy. And yet, you do not struggle to live the life of a Christian. It flows out of you. It flows out of you. The sitting position is a consciousness in the realm of the spirit. And a lot of believers are not conscious of their sitting position. They struggle to achieve everything in their lives. And it's not God's desire for us to struggle to achieve everything in our lives. It's God's desire for Him to walk in us, both to will and to do of His good pleasure. That is to say, it is not the level of conduct that we live by that allows God to mark us good. It is the allowance for Him to live through us that allows God to mark us good. God wants to live through us. He doesn't just want us to live for Him. Most believers want to live for God. They want to please the Lord by their actions. They want to please the Lord by fulfilling the law. They want to please the Lord by doing the right things. And God is saying, no matter how hard you try to do the right things, you will still fail. Because the law was never perfect. It was never stipulated for you to live a perfect life. The law came so that you could know how imperfect you are. The law came so that you would desire a better thing. You will desire a better life. You will desire to see a better glory. If you now realize that you cannot live this Christian life with your own strength, then God steps in. And he says, come. Don't come and stand. He said, come and sit. Let me do the standing. Let me do the walking. While you, all you do is do what? You relax. You chillax. You do the sitting. I will do every other thing. Is that not a good news? Is that not a good news? That's why the Bible says, It's Christ that is in you that is the hope of glory. It's Christ that is in you that is the hope of glory. You are trying to please, please Christ. And Christ is saying, Let me walk through you. Just give me space. That is why the Bible says your righteousness is as filthy rags before him. When you allow the Holy Spirit in your heart, and you allow him to find expression through your life, your life is going to be beautiful. He will lead your steps. The Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they have become the sons of God. They are the ones that can enter into the same authority with God. So, uh, a certain thought says, let's live like Jesus lived on the earth. Let's, let's walk like Jesus walked on the earth. What did Jesus do when he was on the earth? 
Jesus opened blind eyes on the earth. What did Jesus do when he was on the earth? He opened deaf ears on the earth. Jesus healed the sick on the earth. Uh, let's live like Jesus lived on the earth. Now, living like Jesus lived on the earth is a lower life. It's a lower life. Copying Jesus is a lower life. There is a higher life. Trying to copy Jesus is a very low life. It's a very low life. Jesus did not come so that we can copy him. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. So if you try to imitate what Jesus was doing, now, I thought that was the best thing that I could see in the Word of God. To look at Jesus and to follow his footsteps. Following the footsteps of Jesus, I feel, will lead me to the right path. But Jesus is saying to me, if you try to live the life, that I lived on the earth is a lower life. How do I know? I would, love, I would have loved to share theology with you, but I don't want to rest there because I don't have time. When Jesus was on the earth, he was not yet the firstborn of the Father. Jesus lived here, even though he was the Son of God, he lived as a prophet of God when he was on the earth. Jesus could not manifest his glory while he was on the earth. Jesus lived like any other prophet could live while he was on the earth. Every miracle he did, every other person could do it. That is why he kept challenging the disciples, O ye of little faith, O ye of little faith. He was trying to show them that what he was doing was not exceptional. It was, it was the revelation of everything that every other person could do. And there was a particular time they challenged him. And Jesus said, now, is it not written in your word that ye are gods? He said, what I am saying, is it, is it really a sin? I'm a child of God. So there was, there was nothing exceptionally special. About the days that Jesus lived on the earth. Uh -huh. So his desire is not for us to look at his footprints on the earth. Those stories were just written for us to see the manifestations of how grandiloquent he was and how he walked. But that was a lower life. There's a higher life that Jesus has. The life he had when he walked on the earth. Is different from the life that he has when he rose up from the dead. One life died, another life sprang up. So Jesus did not say, as he was, so are we. He said, as he is. He is talking about his resurrected life. Not the life he lived on the earth. There's a better life, Pastor Toebi. There's a better life. And that life is the resurrected life. So Jesus died. Why? Because every time you're going to plant a corn and you want to reap harvest, you've got to put that corn to the ground. And Pastor Toby read it. He said, except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. So God needed a certain kind of life to flow through us. And that life Jesus did not have it when he walked on the earth. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. Joy that rests.
rescue the earth lives in me lives in me when Jesus walked on the earth he walked like a man he could be tempted like a man he could get tired like a man he would go to sleep like a man so he told his disciples follow me as I make you I want to take you somewhere I want you to see something now listen ladies and gentlemen Judas followed Jesus all these years that Jesus was preaching Judas saw Jesus raising the dead Judas saw Jesus healing blind eyes Judas saw Jesus manifesting the power yet Judas was not convicted in his heart Judas still betrayed Jesus why? because Judas was not born again the life of God was not in him to live the life that Jesus wanted him to live Peter saw Jesus manifesting power. Peter saw Jesus working miracles. Peter walked on water with Jesus. Yet, when they asked him, are you one of those disciples? He denied. He was afraid. There was still fear in Peter's heart. Because Peter did not have the life of God. Oh, but on that precious day, when Jesus died on the cross and went to the grave and defeated the key and collected the keys of hell and death from Satan when he was coming back up he was coming back with a different kind of life that life is called the Zoe life the God kind of life he came to release that life to humanity so he was the seed that brought about a manifestation of harvest so the moment you now have the Zoe life what happens now the Holy Ghost can leave heaven and come into you and sit in you and dwell in you and walk in you and flow in you the Holy Ghost could not do that the only thing the Holy Ghost did from the Old Testament till date is come upon people it will just come and go. It will come and go. But right now, sir, while you are sleeping, he's there. Oh, yes. He's there. Oh, yes. He's there. The Holy Ghost now dwells on the inside of you. That same power. The Bible says the same spirit that raised Christ. Look at that. The same power, the same anointing that was responsible for the resurrection power. He says it now dwells in your mortal body. The higher life. The higher life is not the life Jesus lived on the earth. The higher life is the life Jesus lives in heaven. The Bible says we are seated where? In heavenly place. You need to be conscious of this life. Thank you for listening to this message. For further inquiries, please call 0703-082-2216 or follow us on Instagram or Twitter at HOTRMina or like us on Facebook at HOTRMina or email us at info at gmail.com. God bless you.